Oh well, I guess it's time for the next installment of um, the microphone preamp adventure or whatever I'm going to call this. Welcome to Cool Dude Clem's Electronic Workshop with me, your host, Cool Dude Clem. I spent this afternoon coming up with a circuit on how I'm going to power my microphone preamp on a single rail power supply and I'm going to talk you through this schematic that I've come up with. So we've got our input from our power supply here, our single rail power supply, and here it is split into two with these capacitors and these resistors. The resistors are there just to keep the voltage across the two capacitors even, so we don't get one capacitor with more voltage on it than the other one. So now we've got a positive, a negative, and a virtual ground. So that's going to go to the op amps and the differential amplifier. Then over here, I've got a voltage dropper for the meter. So this is the way I um, thought I'd do it. So I thought of simply connecting the meter's negative or ground or whatever you want to call it to the negative of the supply and then have the positive of the supply go through this little dropper circuit here, which drops it to five volts have that supplying the meter and then supplying the audio signal through a capacitor and into the meter. And that should work pretty well. I also think it might be a good idea to put a resistor between the audio out and the thing. I might not use that resistor, I'm, I might drop that, but yeah, if it all goes well, it should work. So, I think the first thing to do is build up this part of the circuit and see if the preamp can work off that. I hate this camera, oh my god. Look at that. It's perfectly focused on the left, but the right is all blurry. This camera is so stupid. Why is the focus not even across the whole playing field? But yeah, anyway, as you can see here, I've put the two capacitors together. So let's just give this a little power on. Hopefully I've got the power connected the right way around. We don't want the capacitors to go boom. Okay, so this is the voltage we've got going in. We've got about 20.7 volts. Now, we should have about half of that in the middle. If I could just... Oh, these clips are so stiff, they're impossible to work with. In the middle there, we've got about 10.3 volts. And yeah, that's about where it needs to be. So that's working. Next question is... Can we power up the microphone preamp with this? Is 1000 microfarads going to be enough? Okay, um... Put some better leads on my meter. Okay, just a couple of crocodile clips attached to the meters. Um... Own... Leads... Test leads... Whatever. At least these are a lot more flexible. Alright, so... Got my little voltage divider hooked up to the preamp. So, uh, first of all, I'll turn it on, I guess. Let's see what kind of voltages we're getting. Okay, I'm going to test our negative supply. Minus 10.3 volts. Remember that this ground is a virtual ground and not an actual ground. It's a virtual ground created from the capacitors and resistors. Let's see what our positive voltage is. It should be about the same. Yep, 10.3 volts. So the next question is, will this work? Well, let's find out. Okay, so let's turn it on. Hopefully the computer is also connected. And yeah, I'm speaking into the microphone right now and I can hear it, I can see the waveform appearing on Audacity, so I know it's working. So. I've got this preamp connected to my computer, which is recording. So, the output is connected as normal. So, this yellow wire goes to the computer's line in, and this blue wire goes to the computer's line in ground. As you can see, the ground is connected between the two capacitors. So, the next question is... What about the level meter? Okay, so I put a transistor and a few other parts together. And look at this. 
a solid 5 volts. With a few capacitors added, I think that would be perfect for the LED level meter. Look at the transistor. Tesla. Alright, I better do this quickly because I've got a pizza in the oven and I really don't want it to burn. So, yeah. But check this out. It's all wired up as in that schematic. Minus that 2.2k resistor which I just decided not to have. And it seems to be working. So we've got the level meter running off the 5 volt supply. The um, voltage divider providing both power supply rails. And yet, the thing is the meter doesn't seem to be as sensitive as it once was. The bottom, um, um, you know, the, the bottom one is what's coming out of the automatic level control, and the top one is what's coming directly out of the microphone preamp. So, what I'm going to do is make this just a little more sensitive and yeah make the meters just a little more sensitive so change these resistors here but yeah so far it's working really well so I guess the next thing now is to put all of this in there also I think this video series has gone on long enough so yeah when I've done that I want to get the um, whatever it is the front panel all done and that's going to be in this video as well. Right, well, uh, yeah, this is coming on really good. So, what I decided to do in the way of calibrating the um, automatic level control, you might have noticed I've drilled a little hole right at the back there, which lines up perfectly with where this trimmer is. And for some reason my camera thinks this capacitor has a face, I don't know why. So I can stick a screwdriver in there and adjust that. Alright, so here it is. Everything is now all here before I tidy up all the wiring and, you know, make the front panel and everything. So I'll just show you what I've added this time. Now I have a power jack, so I can plug power in and also a switch, power switch. I never make a professional metal work guy, would I? Yeah, you'd never hire me if there was any professional metal work to do. At least this one fits nice and snug. Ah, oh, I'm really getting on with it now. So yeah, you can see that looks a lot better. I discovered a roll of that sticky back vinyl covering that I completely forgot that I had, so I, and I made a nice cover with that. I'm also putting the switches and all the other things in. Just got one more potentiometer to put there. And one little mistake that I forgot, I forgot to add any provision for the output jack, which I don't have at the moment, so yeah. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do about that, but... Well, it looks like I'm going to have to get a new camera, because this camera just will not focus on anything anymore. See, I'm going through the manual focus and the autofocus, and it's always blurry. Unless I zoom it just about right, I get it in sharp focus. Well, here it is, if my camera will focus on it. The almost finished product. I managed to find a couple of those jacks in my um, parts box. And I made the stupid mistake of forgetting to cut a hole for the power jack. So that. Why is it that whenever I try to move my hands or anything, things get in the way? But like I said, yeah. In my infinite stupidity, I forgot to cut a hole for the power jack, so that's why that's like that. Well, I guess it's time to power this thing up and see if it works. Also, I'm going to have to cut this resistor and um, potentiometer down a little bit, because the 
shift is a little bit too tall. Okay, so here is the full circuit. I'm just trying to get it all in the shot. Yeah, here is the full circuit. For those of you who want to have a look. So I'll just go through what some of these things are. So yeah. This variable resistor here is our common mode noise rejection. This one here is our sensitivity. And this one here is the gain, which I forgot to mark what I've actually put there. Why is it that as soon as I start recording, I know there's a billion things that I haven't marked. So yeah, that's a 10k. So yeah, we've got a power supply down here, which creates the positive and negative voltage rails for the op amps using a virtual ground. And then I've got this little regulator circuit here to power the um, LED level meters. This section right here, this is the microphone preamp itself. And this over here is the, um, the um, automatic level control. And of course, I forgot to mark what transistors I'm using. Uh, this was a BC557. Uh, How do people do this? You start writing and then you run out of room as you're writing. I forgot to mark these resistors here 4.7k, 4.7k. Oh, you know what? I'll just put up a um, high resolution scan of this because my camera, although it claims to have 1080p resolution, it's like, I don't know, maybe 540 upscaled. So stupid. Okay, it is done. So, I've got my microphone just hanging here plugged into it and I've got the output connected to the computer so I'm going to turn this on and if it works the very next thing we'll hear will be from this microphone preamp so here we go and of course it would help if I actually started the computer recording as well and yes it is working Oh, that was my stomach there. I don't know if you heard that. So we've got our uh, um, common mode noise rejection. There was probably a lot of noise while I was adjusting that. You know, because of the changing voltages. This one is the sensitivity control. As I'm turning that up and down, you can see the stuff changing. Or rather, hear the stuff. Um, hear the levels changing. And this is the master gain. And now let's put in the automatic level control. Alright, so we are now recording with the automatic level control. As you can see, the level meters are responding a little bit differently this time. So this one is the output from the automatic level control. This one is the output straight from the microphone preamp itself. So yeah, when I put it into this mode, they're both measuring the output from the microphone preamp, but one is measuring the output from the microphone preamp and the other one's measuring the output from the automatic level control. I got a mid-range speaker here, a four inch mid-range speaker. And I'm going to connect this up to my microphone preamp to see how well it works. So I'm just going to put the microphone down. Plug this in! Okay, yeah, there we go. So, this is with a... Actually, that's coming out very, very loud. I'm going to turn the sensitivity right down, so it shouldn't be so loud now. Okay, so this is using that 4-ohm, I mean, 4-inch mid-range speaker. It's still too loud. So I'm going to turn my gain all the way down. But... Is this a good amount of gain? Yep, yeah, okay, that's a good amount of gain. A good amount of gain and a good amount of sensitivity. So yeah, let's using this speaker as a microphone and see how well it works. Anyway, what I want to do now is I want to connect this up as single-sided 
inputs. Because right now I've got um, a stereo um, audio jack in there, you know, tip ring sleeve. And the ring and the sleeve are the hot and cold sides of the output. So, I'm going to unplug this. And then connect it up with um, just an ordinary mono cable. So we'll only have single sided input and we'll see how well that works. Okay, this is with single-sided input. So, yeah, there's not going to be any common mode noise rejection, um, rejection in this mode. But this is just a test, or rather proof that it works. So, anyway, um, I guess that's it for this video. So, until next time, goodbye. Now, here, as promised, is a high-quality scan of the schematic.